So, um, Periapsis Press, uh, can you kind of uh, tell us uh, uh, what, what your site is and who your target audience is? Sure. Uh, so, Periapsis Press started with as kind of a reaction. Uh, my husband, David Room, uh, published, I think it was in 2019, his first book, Uriel's Revenge, and it's a sci fi book. Um, and we were sort of exposed to uh, indie publishing for the first time and sort of realized that there wasn't a lot out there as far as help for readers in finding good science fiction fantasy to enjoy and that there were there was a lot of desire on the part of indie authors to do uh, things to support one another, but there wasn't a lot of time. Um, and reading is my hobby and my passion. <laughs> um, I like in high school, just read everything I could get my hands on uh, and sort of coming out of college, wanted to continue to do productive things with my consumption of so much entertainment. So I was already spending a lot of time reading and wanting to create a, a, like content with it. And it seemed like this was a good match for me. So, so, are, so are you, uh, are you primarily uh, writing these reviews uh, for your indie author uh, group of people or uh, are, are these, are these uh, reviews that uh, uh, pe people se seeking out good uh, uh, sci-fi fantasy are, are wanting to come and read? Uh, primarily focused on readers, so people who are seeking out good sci-fi fantasy. And the reason for that is um, I see a lot of need for stuff that's focused on readers. Um, a lot of book blogging, a lot of authors' blogs, unfortunately, start to tend towards talking to the people who are the same as them. So other bloggers, other authors, where I wanted to design the website so that it would be easy for readers to find stuff. So I have the, the long form reviews so that people can really dig in and decide if something's right for them. But then I also have it set up so that it's easy to just browse by the covers um, in such a way that you know that we recommend the book because we only do positive um, and you can do it without getting any spoilers or whatever. Sure. Sure. Yeah. And I, I, I like how your, uh, your site is set up and um, it, it's nice because you can, you can dig into sci-fi or fantasy and you, you split those up and we're going to talk about that here in just a second. But then you also have what, what I always have a hard time is people say, Oh, what are your like top three favorite books? And I always have to be like, okay, we're going to have to talk about like sci-fi time travel, but like time travel in the future, not time travel in the past. And I really have to like uh, really negotiate my, my genres of, of how I'm going to, break down my list it's you know like asking my favorite movie it's like no sorry like i can tell you what, what i've what i've liked in the past six months but uh yeah so i i have, I have like three books and they're all sci-fi so I, those are my my go-to one where i'm not taxing myself or the person who's just making polite conversation be like no come on just just tell me and i, I don't really care at this point so so yeah i i i, I, I like your um your, your breakdown so if, if i'm looking for kaiju sci-fi there's a section for that or weird Western. I really like that. So yeah, that's, Thank that's you. <laughs> so, um, right. so, so yeah, we, uh, so we're talking about kind of two genres, right? Sci-fi fantasy. And, um, <clears throat> um, I, 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 so one of the reasons also to have you on is, um, in Scott Christian's book, what about evil? Um, he wants to present a, a meta narrative overview of, of not just scripture, but world history. And, and those two, uh, interact with each other. And, um, we've also been, uh, I've also been listening to um, uh, J.D. Wilson's um, uh, um, uh, 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 Stories Are Soul Food podcast, where he was really looking at a, a kind of a, a stories and fiction from a, a Christian worldview. And so I, I'm, I'm getting inundated with a lot of this. So I, I, it, it's, it's stirring up my mind. So what about these two uh, genres? Should we separate or should we not? And we we're kind of just talking about them as as kind of the, the consumer culture as and then what, what, 
what either sets them apart or what what really defines their 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 ending. So you know, uh, Kurt Vonnegut's uh, Slaughterhouse Five. It's a time travel and aliens, but it's kind of not really. And so it's just sometimes hard to define genres, especially right now when people are trying to deconstruct everything and and tell antihero stories that you don't like the characters and they don't like you as a reader. So it's it's it, I, f- I find myself being very uh, neurotic as how I could define these genres if, if I tried. And I'm all about definitions. <laughs> sure. Uh, there's a lot of discussion <laughs> of, around that. Um, the way that I approach it is from a reader's perspective, uh, which is how do I find what I want to read next? Mm. Um, genre splitting is really more of a publishing thing where um, it's to help you target your market to craft reader expectations Um, so the way that and it's not perfect obviously (laughs) the way that I have approached it is setting based so if something is set in space, I say sci-fi, <laughs> straight off the bat. Um, and if it's set in a more um, traditionally fantasy world, um, that's when I say fantasy. Obviously, there's a lot of overlap between the two, and that's what makes it so hard. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> like, I, I just remember <laughs> going to Barnes and Nobles and having to always go to the back, no matter what, what Barnes and Nobles you were at. But and, and Barnes and Nobles was this bookstore that you went to and purchased books. It was a, a weird concept, and you'd always have to walk all the way in the back, and and like you had to share it with like the the weird art people, and and you know then we could hang out as a collective of of misfits in the back, and and it was always uh um you know walk past the fiction, you walk back to your, past your history. And there, there they were in glorious two shelves. You may have gotten three, which was really nice, but then they added manga to it. And so you kind of lost space in there and it was always sci-fi and fantasy. And so it's, you know, if it's, if it could be set in the world of Tolkien, uh, fantasy, but then you brought in other things like, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, wizards with hockey sticks and you're like, okay, well now it's urban fantasy, but is 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 that sci-fi now because it's in the modern perspective so it, it's really hard to, to fit in but that's also a good thing because then we have more stories to tell and we're not you know having to write there once was a hobbit who lived in a hole type, type right. story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah so i i try to use my genre tags as more of a help for readers than as a hard and fast like this is this is a kaiju thriller as opposed to the mech thriller that didn't have kaiju, but the kaiju also has mechs. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> if the kaiju has has magic, then it's a harder harder one. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah totally. <laughs> so then, um, are are your authors that you're bringing in, uh, and and we'll, we're kind of uh, going to talk about uh, from a Christian perspective, are are they uh, only Christians? Are they writing for Christian audiences, or is is it more your I guess uh, your idea is to uh, uh, bring good fiction to uh, a Christian audience or, or, or is just, um, or is it just from your perspective where, where you're wanting to read just from, or, or recommend from, from your, your worldview? So I think on the about page, I say like stuff that doesn't come into conflict with our Christian worldview. And like, that's pretty open. <laughs> um, <laughs> So the authors and their stories don't have to be Christian. Um, like I, we have stories by people. I have no idea, you know, what their religious views are. Um, I try to pick Christian authors um, when I can, but sometimes it's just whatever catches my eye and then I read it and I decide. Um, we... We like. I really feel that the um, the idea that all stories point back to God's story is is a, a legitimate one. So I don't feel that 
the stories or the authors have to be Christian per se, um, because they're going to point back to God if they are good stories. Um, that being said, we, we do try to pick stories that have thematic uh, messages that are, that are in line with what we believe, um, not necessarily just about uh, God, but about, about like the whole, our whole worldview in general. Um, I think that that really opens up a nice diversity of like thematic stuff too, because you get um, authors who are Christian who don't feel like they have to be preaching. Um, we like we have um, well Paul Thompson's Drosselmeyer, right? He's picking. He's he's got this great focus on a, a social issue. And then I've got people like um, T.J. Marquis. Uh, heroes metal stuff where he he tackles the the sovereignty of god right like so like they run the 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 gambit of interesting topics but their stories aren't about those things they just have those as underlying messages gotcha. 